see everybody here this morning. Amen. Yes. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. 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 Amen. Isn't God good? Yes. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I just had such a wonderful time up here yesterday. Yes. It's just so good to see God's people come together in such a wonderful atmosphere and environment. You know, everybody working together in one mind and one accord. Yes. So many smiling faces and you know, they even started singing and praising the Lord in here, and it just makes you just never want to leave, you know. Amen. But aren't you thankful that God's still here today? Amen. Amen. We can Amen. Him in spirit and in truth, that he will be here in the midst of us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a scripture. I had it marked, but I think my little marker fell out, but I believe it was in Psalms, and it just said, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know what? we got a reason to rejoice today. Amen. So Jesus sent his disciples out to preach. They were out casting out devils in his name. And he said, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you through his name. And he said, rather rejoice because yes. your names are written down in heaven. Amen. You know, God is so good. We're saved today. We're yes. saved by his blood. We're saved by his mercy. We're saved yes. by his grace. And he is worthy of the praise. We can rejoice today. Because we have a hope that's beyond this world. Amen. We have something to look forward to. And I came here today to worship Him. Lord, we thank You. We thank You for, your, for this day, Lord. We thank You for Your mercy, God. We thank You for Your goodness, Lord. We came here today to praise You, Lord. We need You in this place. We need Your Spirit to move, Lord. We need Your Word to speak to our hearts, Lord. We need the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage, Lord. We pray that You would be in the midst of us.
of the Lord is in this place right now. Thank you for your beautiful presence. We need to just entertain his presence. Hallelujah. Let's just entertain the presence of the Lord in this place right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Reach out to him. Just reach out to him. Say, Lord, I, I love you. I, I need you in my life. So I desire a touch from you. The Lord is here. He will minister to you today. Let's, let's entertain the presence of the Lord right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, 
today. We need to pray for Colby, Colby Beck, Elena Beck, Amen. and some special and spoken needs. We need to remember the demon family today. God would minister to them. I know there's a, probably a lot of other needs, a lot of other requests that you have. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is when we bind together in prayer, and I want you to call those needs out to the Lord. And we're going to bind together. Amen. And then we're going to get a void line and we're, yes. to, we're, going yes. to, we're going to lay hold to that promise that yes. God responds. Yes. Amen. When there was unity. And so we're going to bind together in prayer. And I believe that the Lord is going to minister and touch that. these needs this morning. I believe. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we God, we come before you today, Lord. We pray for Sister Ruby Critic, Lord. We pray for Mary Vivis, Sister Peggy Ramon, God, and these elders. We pray for them, God. We ask God for you to move and work in their lives. Heavenly Father, we pray for Colby today. God, I ask God for you to touch him right now. God, meet his needs, God. Hallelujah, Lord, you know. God, what it means. God, you know the situation that he is in. God, I ask God for the word. Lord, have your way, God. We touch David today. Touch God, the, the special needs and requests, God. Lord, I ask God for you to move and work. God, touch the demon family today, God. Move by your spirit, God. Oh, let your angels be dispatched. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I bind together. God, with every other believer here today, as they are lifting their needs up to you, God. Lord, I ask God for you to move and work. And God, touch everybody, every heart, in Jesus' name. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for it today. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you. 
thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to Lord to worship in our giving, God, to return back to you what is yours, Lord. God, I ask God for you to bless God everyone here, God Almighty, and bless this offering to the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may bring your offering to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I believe Sister Emily has a few announcements. Praise the Lord. While you are worshiping and giving, um, just a few announcements um, after service this morning. Um, we are going to have a quick media team meeting. So if you are involved in the media in any way, I need to see you after service. So please make sure you're here. Um, and then this next Sunday is uh, Father's Day. It's already here. We're halfway through the year. And uh, it's going to be a special time. Also, we had, um, Pastor Don and I had talked because when we had scheduled things for um, the month of June, we did not pay attention to the fact that uh, several of our events we had placed on the Saturday before Father's Day. So, Royal Rangers and Men's Fellowship are going to be moved to Saturday the 22nd. Um, same times, 3 to 6 for Royal Rangers, and then uh, Men's Fellowship will be <clears throat> excuse me, at 6 o'clock, so you don't want to miss that. However, I really went back and forth over our ladies' event, and I did not feel, initially I was thinking, oh, I have to cancel it because of 22nd plan, and I was going back and forth, and I did not feel like I needed to cancel it. So it is going to be the 15th, but we're going to back up the time from 12 to 2 because I'm sure lots of families week out on a ladies' event. We only get together every other month, and I think it's important for us to gather. So if you are available on this next Saturday, the 15th, from 12 to 2, um, our ladies are still going to get together. Um, it's going to be here at the church this time, but I did want y'all to be aware of that. I know I told y'all I was trying to decide what to do. That's what we are going to do. And then at the end of the month, we have revival. June 28th through the 30th. That Friday will be at 7.30. Saturday at 7.30. And then Sunday will be at 11 a.m. We won't have Sunday school that morning because it is a fifth Sunday as well. And every fifth Sunday, um, we have a meal and fellowship after church. Um, so, uh, and Revival is going to be with uh, Brother Childs. Uh, again, we are looking forward to that. So, as far as dishes to bring, this is going to be just whatever you would like to bring. Um, cold dishes would be wonderful because it's June and it's hot. So, if you want to bring things like watermelon, cold pasta salads, I mean, obviously, we probably have to have some warm food because not everything can be cold unless we just do sandwiches. But um, whatever you would like to bring. Um, and that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time uh, after the service. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask. Amen. So if you want to bring cold chicken and cold pizza, <laughs> cold, <laughs> hey, that's all right with me. <laughs> it's actually, I prefer that. <laughs> but, no, it's going to be a great time. Uh, thank you to everybody that came out yesterday and yes. helped man. What a team. Everybody just pitched in. And yes. I, I told Emily, I was like, man, I was looking around for things to do because everybody was doing everything I was putting on doing. And uh, it was just great, fantastic. And we got a lot accomplished. And I'm very thankful for everybody. Amen. Be sure, if, if you're a father, man, I'd really love for you to come. Be sure to be here next week. It's going to be a great time, and uh, we've got a, uh, we, we, we're going to do like a little drawing at the end of the service, and it says, can I, can I tell, can I just tell you? Yeah, tell us, 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 there is a local ranch in Moody, and, and their ranch there's an apostolic family that owned the ranch, and uh, they uh, they put together these meat boxes, and uh, it's got like 
New York strip ribeye. It has three pounds of beef and got a sirloin in there. And anyways, they gave us a really great deal. And so we we the church bought a uh, one of those boxes in. It's gonna go home with one of the fathers. One of the but you gotta be here. <laughs> you gotta be here to get it. And uh, but one of the fathers, we're gonna put everybody's name in a little bowl, we're gonna draw a name. Whatever name comes out, they get to take home that box. And so it's uh it's all grass fed and no antibiotics, nothing in, in the cows that are uh, very naturalistic. They like to just uh, take care of them. And so it's, it's a great little gift. So be sure and try to be here for Father's Day. It's next week. Amen. And I'm, I'm excited when Emily's, I did not come up with the idea. I don't come up with great ideas. <laughs> Emily came up with that idea and I was like, ooh, that is so good. <laughs> what body's really going to be enjoying Father's Day, and so, uh, but it's going to be a great, great time, and we're going to have a great uh, pastor will be teaching Sunday school, we are going to be having Sunday school next week, pastor will be teaching, and uh, Brother Moody's going to be ministering for Father's Day, and so that's going to be a great time, yes. great time in the Lord, I'm just really excited and looking forward to what God is going to do, amen. Praise God. Are you thankful for the Lord today? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Lord, He is doing great things. Yes. yes, He is. Amen. But I believe He wants to do greater. Amen. Amen. The scripture says in Genesis that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. But everything changed when He spoke. The Spirit prepares the way for the Word. And when the word goes forth, if you'll receive the word, if you will receive the word, God can change your life. He can transform. He can do greater things than you could ever imagine. And so we are so very honored to have Brother Kelton Carter, Brother and Sister Carter. <laughs> I, I went up to Danielle earlier and I said, Sister Carter is so good to see. She said, well, I'm here every week. <laughs> She's my niece. She talks to me like that a lot. <laughs> we, we love Sister Carter, Brother Carter. Brother Carter, will you come minister the word of the Lord to us today? Amen. Everybody say, Lord bless Brother Carter. Lord bless Brother Carter. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Um, the church that I grew up going to, we didn't have service until 2 o'clock, so we're still waking up. <laughs> uh, it's good to be able to come be with y'all now here in Belton on Sunday mornings. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thankful for this church and the ministry here in Belton. Um, Brother John has been a part of my life since as far as back as I can remember, always taking me to church events and uh, keeping me in check. Um, so I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here today and share with y'all what God has laid on my heart. Amen. Um, so today we're going to go to Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 through 9 to start off. Numbers 21, 5 through 9. A story you may have heard about Moses leading God's people out of Egypt. There's a lot in this passage, uh, more than just the face value. We're going to look into that today. So Numbers 21, 5 through 9. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth, loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, 
and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Brother John, would you pray? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence. Lord Jesus, I ask God for you to anoint Brother Kelton today as he delivers your word. Anoint your word as he goes forth. Let it find fertile ground that, Lord, your word may bring forth fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. So in this passage in Numbers, uh, there's a lot, a lot of different things that we can learn um, more than just the surface level. Uh, we can see that, quick overview, stick with me, uh, we should not doubt God. Amen. We should not doubt God. We can also see that we shouldn't take for granted what he has done for us. Right. Amen. We should not desire to go back to where we came from. Amen. That's right. And even if you do go back or if you haven't found the Lord yet, you can be delivered as long as you make an effort, as long as you claim your deliverance. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we're going to look at all of these different topics a little bit at a time. Um, but before that, we're going to look at the situations that led up to this point where yes. the snakes were sent among the people of Israel uh, by yes. God. And in order to do that, we're going to look at quite a few scriptures um, referencing the, the traveling of the children of Israel, the children of God, out of Egypt, led by Moses. Uh, so first off, we'll go back to Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4. Moving backwards from this point in Numbers 21, Exodus 16 and 4, it says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and all the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So when God brought his people out of Israel, out of bondage, remember they were in slavery, one of the first things they did was start complaining and worry yeah. that God wasn't yeah. going to save them, that they were going to yeah. die of starvation. They yeah. said, Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt yeah. just so we could die here in the wilderness because we don't have anything to eat? Yeah. yeah. I really hope that if I was one of those people who God had miraculously let yeah. out of Egypt, right. I yeah. hope that wouldn't be my mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So many times we see what God has done for us, yeah. Yeah. and yet we still are doubting Him because there's a new problem that shows up. Amen. So many times, God has done so much for us. He's, I mean, miracle after miracle, and yet, many times, we're so focused on what's going wrong now that we forget yeah. that he brought us through yeah. all the trials that have led up to this Amen. point. Amen, that's right. And if he's yeah. led us through all of those trials, why would yeah. he let us perish now? Why right. would he just yeah. abandon us? He will not. That is not yes. the kind of Amen. God that we serve. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So God brought his people out, and they were like, we're hungry, we're going to die. They were scared. I don't know why, but they were. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have faith in God. So Moses prayed, and God said, I will rain bread from heaven for yeah. you. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't Amen. happen. Yeah. I know we've had some crazy weather lately here in Texas, <laughs> yeah. but there still hasn't been any bread falling yeah. from the sky. Yeah. Yeah. That is a miracle. Yeah. And so God's people needed something, and even though their attitude was wrong, they had just been delivered, yeah. Amen. they still asked Moses, go to God, and Moses went to God, and a miracle was right. given yeah. for God's people. Right. Amen. God could have just given them, let them stumble upon some seeds, and they could have had a toil and labor, and yeah. some could have died while they were waiting for the crop to grow, but God cares about his people, yeah. and that's not how he handled it. He gave them a miracle so they yeah. could keep Amen. traveling, so they could know that God is going to take care of us. Amen. That's right. Amen. And yet God's people continue to have this attitude and travel down this path. We see yeah. it in Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 and 5 and 6. Verses 4, 5, and 6 of Numbers 11. It says, Verse 
whatever yeah. the Egyptians told them to do. Yeah. And yet they focused on it back then. We got to make sure that we're keeping our minds right. <laughs> God yeah. took care of us yeah. back then. He brought us through that. Yeah. He's bringing us through whatever we're going through today. Yeah, that's and right. so Man. even if Man. we don't have some of the nice things we had in the past, it's still better <laughs> to live for God. Right. Yeah. Despite the <laughs> lack of meat in this case, the lack of cucumbers and melons. Right. Why don't you just yeah. ask God? Yeah. He gave you bread out of the sky. Right. Yeah. If there's something that you want that you don't have, that you used to have, oh, just yeah. ask God for oh, it and see what happens. Yeah. If it's something that you need, God is going to make sure that you have it. <laughs> Sometimes all we have to do is ask. Yeah. 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 So instead of complaining, we should try asking yeah. and remembering what the Lord has done for us. Give right. thanks for what he has done, for what he is doing, and ask for what we need and our needs will be met. And how do I know this? Because he did it for the Israelites again and again and again and some more and again. Uh, we see it in Numbers chapter 11. If we skip down to verse 23, uh, we see Moses talking to God. And Moses got a bad attitude too a little bit. He started yeah. to complain a little bit about the situation that they were in. Perhaps he was tired of manna. Verse 23 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, It is the Lord's hand waxed short. Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Yeah. Said, Moses, why are you doubting right. me? When have I ever let you down? Right. Right. Even Amen. the man of God was beginning to worry. Yeah. That they were going to be let down. Yeah. yeah. We've got to make sure that we don't fall into this trap. There's so much negativity in the world. There's so much going on. Yes, there, there is. are tribulations and trials that you will go to. Just because you know Jesus doesn't mean life is perfect and smooth sailing. But it does mean that whatever waves come at you, you can make it through those trials, through those temptations. Yes, amen. So we've got to remember that. Keep our mind on that. Whenever life gets tough, I know that God is going to take care of me anyways. Not, God, you've taken care of me seven times in a row very recently, but will you take care of me the eighth? Yeah. He will. Stop worrying about it. Stop Amen. praying about it. Instead, ask him to help take care of the situation. And we see in verse 32, verse 32, same chapter, so we're just jumping down a little bit. Verse 32 says, And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quells. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. So here we see God answering the people's prayer. Yeah. Did they need quail? Did they need meat to survive? Probably not because God gave them manna. I don't know the nutritional value of manna, but I'm assuming if it's from God, it's enough. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. But they wanted quail, and God desires for his people to be blessed. He desires for us to uh, enjoy the benefits of living for God. So if we need or even Occasionally, when we want something, God will give it to us uh, to show his goodness, yeah. to show that he will take care of us. And sometimes just because it's nice to have him, he cares about us. Yeah. He is our heavenly father. Yeah. And a father likes to make his kids happy. Yeah. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. I know my dad did. I'm not a dad yet. Yeah. I'm working on it. No. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know that... <laughs> God will take care of his people and give us more than we need to basically survive. More than our basic needs. And we see that here time and time again. God saved people from slavery. He gave them bread from heaven. That's a miracle. He made quail show up so that they could eat quail. A lot of quail. More quail than they need. And yet God's people still were worried and still questioning God. So we can learn that we need to not doubt God. He's taking care of he's taking care of us this far and he will take care of us more. We are his people. Amen. We know that what God has done for us shouldn't be taken for granted. If God does a miracle in your life and gives you manna, whatever you need, then we need to be thankful for that. Even if we don't have what we want. If yeah. we get a car that gets us from point A to point B, yeah. 
but it's not the nicest car that we wanted, well, be glad that God bless you with a car that gets the job done. Amen? Whatever, we're, uh, whatever situation we're in, we need to be content because of God's blessings. Right? Amen. So as we continue to watch the children of Israel, uh, we see in chapter 20, one chapter before the fiery serpents came among the people, we see them complaining again. Numbers 20, yeah. verses 2 through 4, it says, And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people showed with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? Why would they ask this question again? They said, we're going to die of starvation, and God gave them bread. They said, we're going to die because we don't have meat, and we want meat, and God gave them meat. They were dying when they were in slavery because they were in slavery. They weren't taken care of, and yet here they are. Is God going to kill us here by not giving us water? No. Instead of complaining and worrying and praying, just ask God for some water, and it will be there. God would not give them manna and quail and do those miracles just to let them die of thirst. Yeah, right. So, Numbers chapter 20, let's go down to verse 10 of the same chapter to continue the story. Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Yeah. Yeah. God takes care of his people. Even if your attitude's not quite right, yeah. if we can <laughs> fix it, if we can bring ourselves to ask God anyways, even though we're upset, even though we shouldn't be upset and we're upset, yeah. <laughs> if we can bring ourselves to talk to God anyways, he will Meet our needs, whatever yeah. they are, wherever they are, whatever the situation is. Even if it seems impossible to have bread in the desert, God will make bread in the desert. Yeah. He'll make it fall out of the sky. I don't know how that works. I don't need to know how that works. It's God. <laughs> Amen? Yes. God saw them through again and again with absolute miracles. Yeah. Two fiery serpents coming in among the people, and the people finally did the right thing. They said, Moses, ask God to help us out. They didn't say, oh, now God's trying to kill us with serpents. This is ridiculous. I can't believe you, God. It looks like they finally caught on. Oh, hey, all we got to do is ask. It's about time. But they asked, and we see that God delivered them or made a way, made a way for them to be delivered. Um, so as I was reading this story, I got to wondering what kind of snakes were killing the Israelites. And I at first didn't think it mattered too much, and it was just something that I wanted to know because I was curious. Um, but as I researched it, I discovered uh, what historians think that kind of snake was, and I'm not saying this is 100% accurate, but I don't think it's a coincidence that God showed this to me whenever I was looking up what kind of snake it was. Um, so the Israelites were near the head of the Gulf of Aqaba, um, which is infested with a lot of venomous reptiles. So it might not have been these snakes, but God still used this example to speak to me and to speak to us. One of these snakes is known for killing people with burning and fiery bites. The Bible mentions the serpent as a fiery serpent. Yeah. And the way that this bite is described as burning and fiery. Yeah. And this snake is called the Naja Haji. I think I'm saying that right. Don't quote me on that. The <laughs> Naja Haji. Or translated the Egyptian cobra. The Egyptian cobra. So these snakes are named after what the Israelite children had been brought out of. The Israelites were set free from Egypt, and yet they yeah. said, Moses, we want Egypt. Moses, we want Egypt. Moses, we want the bread we had in Egypt. We want the cucumbers we had in Egypt. We want the melons, the meat. We want the water we had in Egypt. 
And God sent them a little bit of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not what they wanted. God sent them the little yeah. bit of Egypt. Yeah. Remember, Israel, this is what it was like when you were living in sin. Yeah. When you were Come getting on. that high this from whatever right. gave you that high. Yeah. It was not something that you want to go back to. Right. Amen. Remember, it is not something you want to go back to. Right. Amen. Amen. The people of Israel got a little bit of Egypt. Yeah. And it caused many to perish. Yeah. It caused pain. It caused discomfort. Yeah. Right. When we are set free, when we are delivered from sin or from a situation, we can't keep looking back and wanting part of Egypt, part of sin, part of what right. we were delivered from. Right. Amen. That's yes. right. Because if we get part of it back, it is going to destroy us, and it's going to be fiery, and it's going to be painful. Yep. Yes. Amen. The good news is that if we find ourselves in that situation, God still offers a way for us to have deliverance through Him. Right. No matter what situation we're in, whether we've never talked to God, whether we follow God, whether our attitude is terrible, yeah. whether we're talking bad about the man of God, that's ultimately what led to the serpents being sent among the people of Israel. Let's stop there for a second. Remember, Numbers 22 through 4 said that the people gathered themselves against Moses and against Aaron, yeah. against the people of God. And just one chapter later, yeah. God sent fiery serpents yeah. amongst the people. Yeah. We yeah. cannot go against the man of God. Yeah. God has placed ministers and leaders in our lives and we can't go against them even if we don't agree with where they're leading us or where we're going in our flesh yeah our flesh is not true and uh does not know the truth anyways yeah right so the people of israel were uh going against the man of god even if we find ourselves in that situation where we've got a bad attitude and where we're even not treating our pastor or our leaders like we should, God still offers a way of deliverance. We can still uh, come out of that. But just like uh, my brother said this morning, he said the disciples, Jesus told them to cast the net on the other side of the boat. If they didn't throw the net over, they weren't going to get the fish. The fish didn't jump into the boat. God didn't immediately take the serpents and make them disappear and make every single snake-bitten person immediately healed, but he gave them the opportunity yes. to be healed, the yeah. opportunity to have life despite yeah. their yes. sin, despite oh. them wanting that piece of Egypt. He gave them what they wanted. Yeah. They wanted Egypt. They got the Egyptian cobra. Maybe not quite what they thought they wanted, yeah. but that's how sin works. It's not really what we think it is. Yeah. It's not really what we want. Yes. Amen. And they got yeah. a little bit of what they wanted, and God could have said, no, you wanted that. You did it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Suffer the consequences. But God made a way for them to be forgiven. God made a way for them to be healed from their mistakes. But they had to look at the bronze serpent that Moses made and put on that pole. Amen. If someone was bit by a snake after Amen. God gave them the way to be saved and they chose to uh, not look at it, if they said, oh, I'm just going to stay in my tent because my leg hurts really bad because I just got bit by a snake, they would die. Yeah. If we don't accept yeah. that Jesus died and is lifted up, if we don't choose to look up to Jesus and to accept what he did for us, we are going to perish. We can't make it unless we choose to look up to him. Otherwise, when Jesus died on the cross, we would all have become robots and we would never ever sin and we would never make a decision for ourselves again. But Jesus gives us the decision and the free will, therefore we have to decide to live for God. We have right. to decide yeah. that we don't want the sin that we've been delivered yeah. from or the sin that we're fighting with right yeah. now. Because yeah. if you've ever, uh, well, we all have experienced sin, you know that no matter how many times you do whatever your vice is, you want to do it again. No matter how many times you take a drink of alcohol, you want another drink of alcohol. Or no matter how many times you get high, you're looking for another way to get high. It doesn't satisfy. That's right. And it hurts. Yeah. I know so many crazy situations uh, the drugs and alcohol have led to. It hurts. 
It burns. It is yeah. not something that we want in our lives, even when we oh. think, oh, yeah, but it was fun that one time. Yeah. What about yeah. the hundreds of other times where it wasn't fun, where yeah. sin was beating you down? Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. So we've got to make sure that we are not doubting God. Yeah. And we are not talking bad about the man of God. Yeah. And that we want to keep moving forward and we're not focusing on our glory days of sin because those were not glory days. Yeah. Right. Now we can live in his glory, live in some Amen. real glory days. But if we're so focused on our past and what we've done in our past, the Bible says uh, that we are fools. In Proverbs chapter 26 and 11, it says, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Gross. Yeah. Glad my mom's not here. She likes all Bible verses, but that one she might not like as much as others. Because it's gross. Um, but that's really what it's like. That's what like going back to sin is. It's gross. It's not something that we uh, benefit from in any way. So a fool returneth to his folly. The children who made some debts. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 is the uh, modern day example of what we should look to. We don't look to a bronze serpent anymore, but instead he, Hebrews 12 and 2 looking unto Jesus, yeah. the author and finisher of right. our faith. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah. Looking unto Jesus. Yeah. Whatever yeah. situation you found yourself yeah. in today, yeah. look Unto Jesus. Right. Yeah, you know, if you come at this time, music, music, if you come at this time, today I want to remind you that you can look to Jesus. No matter what situation you found yourself in, if you, like the children of Israel, are in one of these steps that they took on their way out of sin, if you're stuck in the mindset of uh, doubting that God will really take care of you, if you uh, are just taking for granted what God's done, if your attitude just isn't right and you just don't know why, because sometimes we just wake up on the wrong side of the bed, yeah. it happens. God can help with that too. Yes. We've got to remind ourselves that I don't really want to go back. No. Yes, maybe there was the pleasures of sin are but for a season. Maybe for a small period of time it was a little bit fun. But don't focus on that. Focus on the regrets, the parts that yeah. uh, that what what it was really all about, yeah. what slavery really was like. It's yeah. not right. something that any of us yeah. want in our lives. Yeah. Amen. And if we, if you've never made it out of that slavery, never made it out of that bondage, then look unto Jesus. If you're falling back into the same struggles again and again and again, come look to Jesus. He made a way for you to be delivered. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Let's gather around. Let's pray. Let's come look to Jesus. Let's turn our eyes to Jesus. Put your eyes back on the one who can save you, not on the sin that you came from, not the situation that you came out of. Be encouraged today that God will take care of you. You've seen him take care of you before, and you know that he will take care of you again. He's done it before, and he will do it again. So you don't have to worry about life. You don't have to worry about the situations, and you don't have to doubt him because he is going to take care of you. Don't look back at Egypt, because if we get a little bit of Egypt again in our lives, it's like the fiery serpents. It's going to burn. It's going to hurt, and we're going to have to readjust and reset our lives back to Jesus. Going back to sin, going back to Egypt hurts, but God is faithful and just to forgive us no matter how many times we make mistakes. Just look to Jesus today and ask for forgiveness and ask for him to help your attitude. Whatever you need today, Jesus is the answer. Let's look to him. Thank you, Jesus, for looking to you, God. In Jesus' name.
That was good work, Brother Johnson. Yes. Good yes. work. Yes. Amen. And I'm thankful for the Lord today. I'm thankful for what He has done. I'm so glad that Amen. Ernestine and you have been in service with us today. Amen. Yes. Sister Nana's mother. Yes. Very on. Amen. Good to see Jessica and Stephen. Daughter and Amen. friends, I look forward to meeting you after church. But we're so thankful. I hope you have been blessed. And the Lord loves you. Amen. He wants to do great things in your life. Amen. You know, in Jeremiah 29 11, me and Brother Dan, we were talking about this last night. Jeremiah said, He said, I know the thoughts. The Lord was speaking through Jeremiah. He said, I know the thoughts that are leading towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil give you an expected end. And that's what I'm going to leave you on today. Take this powerful word that Brother Kelton preached. Amen. And know that God's got good things in store. He's yes. got an expected end yes. that you're tied to. Yes. He's got good things that He wants to do in your life. He wants to bless you. Brother Torres, I love you, brother. Would you, would you pray Amen. this missile? Amen. Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again, my God, for this word, oh Lord.